vehicle to load. What is it? What exactly does it do? And what are the benefits? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you once again. If you haven't already subscribed and liked, then you might as well go ahead and do it now. Thank you for supporting clean air and a better future. And that really is the crux of what this channel is all about. Now, if you haven't already, jump on stake. Use my link in the description below and you'll get a free stock. You might as well create an investment account for yourself and your family right now. Vehicle to load or V2L is a feature that is becoming increasingly common on electric vehicles and talked about in lots of videos, articles and everywhere. But not everyone seems to actually know what it does. So what can it do? Now, perhaps the most well, the two most fundamental components in any electric powertrain are the batteries and the motors. In normal operation, the batteries power the motors, which causes the vehicle to move. When the vehicle is parked or sitting idle, the batteries, though, are not being used. Well, usually that is. Recently, electric vehicle manufacturers have begun to think about how these batteries could remain useful in such situations. One of the results of this thinking is the introduction of vehicle to load, also known as V2L. Functionality in some recently launched EVs enables them to have this feature, V2L. Put simply, this feature allows the large batteries in electric vehicles to power something external to the car, such as a domestic appliance, power tools, compressors, a barbecue, Whatever you can think of, really. So what are the benefits and what should you be looking for? Well, perhaps the most obvious practical benefit of V2L technology is that it makes amazing camping trips possible. With an electric SUV fitted with V2L technology, for example, it would be theoretically possible to drive off-road to a remote camping location and then draw power from the car's battery to use everyday appliances such as a coffee machine, a microwave, or an electric pump for inflating an air mattress. Now that's not really my style of camping personally. I prefer to camp in a kind of an old school way, but this just illustrates one of the many benefits. And remember, a lot of people who own four-wheel drives are very anti-electric car right now. But once they start to realize what they can actually do with their electric car, they're going to be much more likely to want to buy one. Now, V2L functionality can also have benefits in more serious situations, including rescue and relief efforts during natural disasters or other crises. Now, Mitsubishi, for example, says it used V2L technology in suitably equipped iMeV vehicles as a backup power source in the aftermath of the 2011 Fukushima earthquake and tsunami, and more recently to power mobile refrigeration appliances to deliver COVID-19 vaccines in remote areas of Indonesia. When purchasing an EV that claims to offer V2L functionality, it's important to look out for the actual wattage, the electrical power, that the car can output and the specific adapters or other specialized equipment that may be required to connect the car to an everyday 200 volt, 40 volt appliance that uses a standard three pin plug. Well, that's here in Australia. That's what we use, 240 volt. Depending on your country, that will change though, of course. Hyundai's recently launched Ionic 5, for example, features V2L functionality with an output wattage of 3.6 kilowatt. That is more than sufficient to power everything from a sandwich press to a laptop, and Hyundai includes an adapter with the vehicle so you can plug it in, plug in whatever you want straight away. So in other words, for camping, like Ionic 5 is like a giant EV power board that you can use for almost anything. The only problem right now is getting your hands on, a, on an Ionic 5. Very hard to do. So anyway, the adapter has one end plugging into the car's charge port and the other end containing a female three pin socket to plug appliances into. And you can watch the video from Car Expert showing you a demonstration of that process. Now, other EVs may have a lower output wattage or may not come bundled 
with a similar adapter that can be used to readily connect appliances or devices to the car's battery. You've got to kind of check before you buy the car to make sure it's going to do what you need. The Mitsubishi Outlander FEV plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, for example, is optionally available in certain markets with a 1.5 kilowatt AC power feeder that can be used to power other appliances. So obviously you can see a lot less power coming out of the Outlander FEV versus the Ionic 5. Big difference. So what about how does this compare to vehicle to home and vehicle to grid or V2H and V2G functionality? Vehicle to home and vehicle to grid or V2H and V2G technology uses the same underlying principle described to supply power back to the home or electricity grid from the vehicle's battery. The best way to think about V2G and V2H is that it's a power sharing concept between the home electricity grid and the vehicle that has the potential to make households and offices less reliant or wholly unreliant on the national electricity grid for their energy needs. Now you're probably thinking, yeah, but why would I wanna do that with my expensive, my expensive battery in my expensive electric car? Well, one reason, one reason, one big, big reason is that if that battery happens to be a lithium ion phosphate battery, then, well, you're gonna get so many charges out of that battery that you don't even need to worry about it. In addition to that, you can charge and discharge a lithium ion phosphate battery to 100% and to 0% without seeing any battery degradation. Now, remember, lithium ion phosphate batteries are gonna be used probably in well, 90% in my view of electric cars by 2025. So that's something to consider. If you're buying a car, if it has a lithium ion phosphate battery, well, it's more likely to be the right kind of battery to use for this kind of thing, to use for your home, or to use in a way to actually make money for yourself by taking power out of the grid when it's cheap and putting it back in when it's expensive. The power sharing is undertaken primarily through a two-way charger, also known as a bi-directional charger, which is a special type of charger that's able to feed current back into the electricity grid or home from the EV's battery. Now, I personally believe in the future, say 2030, that a very large percentage of people will actually be doing this on a daily basis. Consider, for example, a home that uses solar power connected to a household battery, such as a Tesla Powerwall. Or I made a video about BYD's equivalent, which is a bit cheaper than the Tesla Powerwall. Check it out in the link in the description below. It's actually quite an interesting product, which has been significantly improved with the new latest version. Now, if the weather has been inclement for several days in a row, the solar panels haven't been able to generate enough electricity and the household battery is therefore running low. Vehicle 2 or V2H tech functionality could allow a connected EV to instead charge the household battery via a two-way charger and effectively power your house. When the weather clears up and the solar panels return to optimal generating efficiency, the household battery can then replenish the EV. Even if a household battery was not being used, a connected EV could potentially mitigate any power loss in the event of a blackout by acting as a temporary power supply for several hours. Mitsubishi is already trialing such a system known as the Dendo Drive House in Japan and Europe with its Outlander FEV. Likewise with V2G functionality on vehicle to grid, any excess energy stored in the battery of an EV could be sold directly to the energy utility and could further assist in stabilizing the electricity grid. Now you can imagine eventually when millions of people are doing this, the electricity grid will be stable all the time because you'll have millions of people plugging in at all different times. So that will enable the grid to be much more stable than it is now. That will significantly reduce electricity prices. Recently, Nissan has worked with the Australian government and the Australian Renewable Energy Agency to trial this functionality in a project dubbed as REVS, Realizing Electric Vehicle to Grid Services. The trial will see 51 Nissan LEAF hatchbacks join the ACT or the Australian Government Fleet and when plugged in via a two-way charger, the cars will provide what is known as an FCAS or Frequency Control Ancillary Service to the national electricity market. FCAS is the process used to rapidly inject extra power or reduce power as necessary to maintain the frequency and stability of the energy grid. So in essence, this project is acting like a peaker plant if you're not already aware, peaker plants are used all over the world. Basically, peaker plants kick in when an energy grid is destabilized, doesn't have energy, too much is being drawn out, it might be really hot, 
everyone turns the aircon at the same exact time, the grid doesn't have, have enough power, and these peak plants have to come in and essentially sell power to the grid at often between 20 to 100 times the normal cost. So obviously stabilizing the grid will enable us to remove those excess, massive excess costs. Of course, lowering the cost of electricity. Now Arena claims the vehicles will have 70% availability as they'll be plugged into two-way chargers when they're not on the road. So what vehicles currently offer V2L, V2H, and V2G functionality? Currently models based on the Hyundai Kia eGMP platform, such as the Ionic 5 mentioned previously, as well as the upcoming Kia EV6 and the Genesis GV60 will all offer V2L functionality out of the box. Meanwhile, the Nissan Leaf and the plug-in hybrid Mitsubishi Outlander and Eclipse cross FEVs offer V2H and V2G functionality if connected to the right equipment, which isn't included when you buy the vehicle. But remember, FEVs usually have a smaller battery, so actually getting as much of functionality out of those vehicles is unlikely. Now, V2L functionality is also a key selling point of upcoming electric vehicles like pickup trucks or utes like the F-150 Lightning, Rivian R1T, GMC Hummer EV, and the Tesla Cybertruck. You can imagine how quickly tradies and just general people who buy these kinds of vehicles are gonna, are gonna transition to an electric version considering the massive benefits of electric. And this is just one of the many benefits. These vehicles all offer multiple 120 volt American voltage standard sockets in the truck bed that could be used to power and charge tools such as electric chainsaws, drills, and a myriad of other different items used on work sites, camping sites, etc., etc. Now, the Rivian R1T, though, in particular, will be available with a camp kitchen option, which includes a 144 kilowatt two burner induction cooktop water pump, sink, and faucet, all powered by the car's battery. Now, obviously, aftermarket providers have popped up all over the place offering all kinds of different camping features you can plug into your electric pickup truck. So Rivian won't be the only ones with this option. Everyone will have this option and it's gonna be really fun to see all the different things you can add to your pickup truck for when you go camping or anything else. So what this means is electric vehicles can make your weekend barbecue, camping trip or outdoors party much better than it was before. Now in Australia, we were told by our prime minister or our president that electric pickup trucks would ruin your weekend. Now let's be weary or wary of similar ridiculous stories from people who have an agenda. The grid, the electric grid can be 100% renewables or very close to it with a bit of planning. And EVs certainly won't ruin your weekend, they'll make it better. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. I look forward to bringing similar videos out like this about V2H, V2G, and all the other V2s which may end up coming out. Who knows? Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.